Hi, it's Tim here from CheapTasticTech.com. I'm going to be reviewing the Blue Advance 5.5 HD budget smartphone. Now, I'm going to be doing this over several days. I'll also be explaining the features of the phone as we go along. Okay, so I'll just turn the box over. It says we have a 5.5 HD bright display. 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor, a gigabyte of RAM, so that's good to be able to run things like Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go, let's say that right and not be like Tim Cook. Eight megapixel main camera, it's got dual speaker audio, I guess that's something like stereo sound. It's got uh, five, megapix five megapixel selfie camera, 4G HSPA, and Android 6.0 right out of the box. Okay, so this is a budget phone. It's under $90, and I'll leave links to the phone below. All right, so now I'm going to open it up and put it together. Actually, I didn't really have to put it together. It just came out of the box in one piece here. And it's a nice feeling phone. It's metal with uh it's really quite a nice looking phone for under ninety dollars. Now let's have a look at the other at the box here. Okay, so you have your information here. There's a bunch of stuff underneath. So these are headphone jacks here. Earphone jacks. Yeah. Guess what? It has a headphone jack. There it is. Okay, and then you got your charger pieces, charger cord, USB cord. This is the battery, so we do have to put that in. Some manuals. Okay, and that's it. So I'm going to get the battery in it and turn it on so you can see it fired up. Okay, now... Before I go any further and put the battery in, I wanted you to know that you also get a clear protective case in the box, and you also get a screen protector. Okay, so this is a good value for money. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take the back off and install the battery. Okay, I just wanted to mention something about getting the back cover off. It looks like, you see the indents here, it looks like you get it off from under there, but it comes off way into the phone on both sides, like right down near the volume buttons and stuff. So it took me a while to figure that out. So now I got the back off. And then there's a spot for your SIM cards over here. So you can put your SIM card in, and of course your battery goes down here. The battery is a 2500 milliamp hour battery. So I'm just going to slide the battery in there and then I'm going to fire up the phone. All right, so it's firing up for the first time now. And it looks all good. Okay, so I'll be back in a little while with some more thoughts. Okay, so I've got it powered on and I was playing around with it for a bit. So there's a couple things I want to go over. So first of all, let's go into settings here. And let's go down just to storage. Okay, you see there's 4.3 gigabytes used of 8 gigabytes. So you got 3.7 gig left right out of the box before you do anything. And what I would suggest, and what I'm going to do, is I'm going to remove some apps that are on here. Not that there's that many, but I don't need the Amazon app. So I'm going to uninstall that. And I don't want the Amazon Kindle app. So I'm going to uninstall that. Apps and games. Oh, this is the Amazon App Store. So I'm going to uninstall that because the Play Store is on here. 
Ace of Android keyboard, calculator, calendar, camera, chrome, clock, cloud print, contacts. So a lot, a lot of the rest of this you're going to probably just leave. You'll see it has an FM radio. Uh, gallery, Gmail. Okay, so you can go through here and see if there's anything else that you want to uninstall. Um, before you put your apps on. You don't want to uninstall phone. That was an accident. So I'm going to get rid of this McAfee security. Okay, and you can also put an SD card in here when you have the back off to put your SIM card in. And I'll go over that a little later. Okay, so you can actually move apps to an SD card once you have one in here. All right, so I'm just going to leave the rest as it is. So let's go back. Now, the other thing I noticed was if you go to display, well, first you, you can turn on adaptive brightness here. When you, it's not in the settings here. These, you'll see in other phones that sometimes there's a little check mark that you can press, but that's not the case here. So you go in and set uh, adaptive brightness if you want, and then it'll it will do that for you, and you don't have to sit there and mess around with it. It actually is doing a pretty good job from what I see so far. All right, now the camera is another thing I had a look at. Let's go back here. Oh, let's first of all let's go down to about device, and you'll see. There's a model number, and we have Android 6.0, so it's right up to date there. The security patch level is March, so that's six months uh, old. Uh, you can't really, on a phone like this, I wouldn't really expect that you're going to be getting security updates. And I've also noticed that this is reasonably quick. Like, we'll go to the Play Store. Okay, so it's not bad. It's got one gig of memory and some free space. Now the camera, it's not very good, uh, but it'll do the job in a pinch. So you can touch the focus. But it's quite slow. You see how long it took to focus there? And video is horrendous. Uh, it it jumps around quite a lot. But it's better than nothing. I wouldn't, you know, if, if it's all you got, then it's all you got. But Okay. So that's the camera. And I'm going to go over a lot more things later, but I went in here and I just went into Chrome just to test it out. And it seems to run pretty good. Okay, so it's not as snappy as a flagship phone, but it isn't too bad. Okay. All right, so those are my first thoughts. Um, I'm going to be back again later after I do some more testing. Okay, so I've been playing around with this for another day, and I've got things set up pretty much the way I want. I put a number of my apps on here that I like to use. And I also theme the phone. And if you want to see how you can theme your phone with different icon packs and different themes, you can see my theming video on my blog, cheaptastictech.com. Okay, now, what I want to do is show you about the SD card. I have an SD card in here now. Okay, so you see at the top there, it says SD card, new SD card detected. And we can set it up. So we want to set this up so that it becomes part of the system storage.
or the internal storage. If it's part of the internal storage, we can move our apps onto it. So let's do that. I'll tap that one. And we'll click Next. Okay, and then we'll just continue. So it erases and formats it. And this will take a minute. So the good thing about this, of course, is that it increases our space that we can install apps on onto this phone. The problem is that if you don't have a fast SD card, it's not going to work well at all. So it's a good idea if you're going to do this to buy a fast SD card. And even so, it's still not going to be that fast. So it's a good idea to keep all your apps on the internal storage if possible. So you might have to trim down what you usually use. And if you're a light user, or at least you're not a power user, then this isn't going to really be a problem for you. Okay, we're almost done here. And then once this is done, we'll be able to uh, move things into the external storage or to the SD card. Okay. Now it's telling us just what I said, that it appears to be slow. But I'm going to go ahead anyway. I would, I would not suggest doing this, but I'll we'll click OK. Okay, and then we can move now or move later. So what this is going to do is it'll move your photos, files, and some apps to the new SD card. So if you're going to do this, you might as well do it from here. So we'll move now. And then we'll click move. So it's telling us there, there are 89.75 megabytes going to be moved to the card. And then it'll move from here. Okay, so your new SD card is working. All right, so we'll just click Done there. Now let's go back to Storage. Okay, and then you see at the top it says default default write disk, and now it's set at SD card. So what that means is when we take pictures or install apps, if they're if, if the apps can be moved to SD card, it'll do it by itself. And if we take a picture, it'll go to the SD card. So that's all there is to that. Now let's just go have a look at our apps here. And I'm gonna go to GSAM battery. Okay, then if we go to storage, you'll see that it's on internal storage. So if I click change, I can now change it to SD card. So if I want to move any apps, that's how I can do it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do that because it is very slow. But that's how you move apps to your SD card. Okay, and it doesn't really matter about the photos. The camera's kind of slow on this thing anyway. So when you take your pictures now, they will end up on the SD card. Okay, and another thing is the battery life. Well, let's go. I'm getting very, actually very good battery life on this. So let's just go to battery. Okay, so I got 38% left, and that's about six hours left. And if I look at my screen on time, I've had the screen on for three hours and 30 minutes. 
So that's really good. It means you can probably get about six hours of screen on time with this device, which is great, especially for a budget device. Okay, and you can see that it looks like it'll last past 1 a.m. And I had it on at about 9 a.m. this morning. So that's easily going to get you through the day. Okay. Now, performance is still decent on here. Let me open up Happy Geek here. It's not as fast as my Galaxy S7 Edge is by any stretch, but it still works fairly well. I mean, it's not like you're going to sit there and wait for a long time to get things to load up. Okay, so at this point, I have everything the way I want it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be slipping in a SIM card tomorrow, and then I will show you how that works and how you get the SD card in as well. I've already got it in here, but I'll show you how to install it, and then I will use it for a bit and talk about the voice quality. Okay, and before we go here, let's go and have a look at the browser. I'm just using the Opera browser. So it works pretty good. And then the keyboard, just a word about the keyboard here. Let's just go here. The keyboard has the numbers above, so you just hold them in there. And then over here, this is a settings. So you can turn different things on and off and change things here. And then when you hit the one to six, I, I quite like this part or the, the number part, you'll see that the number numbers are over on the left and the symbols are on the right, divided into two screens. Okay, so this is a great keyboard. Browsing speed is really good. Let's just go, let's see, let's go Yahoo. Okay, so that's not bad at all. Works just fine. So overall, I'm really impressed with this budget smartphone so far. Okay, in this segment, I'm gonna go over Bluetooth and the camera app. So let's start with Bluetooth. Let me just unlock this here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pair a smartwatch to it and a Bluetooth speaker. All right, so I'm going to pair this smartwatch here. This is one of those inexpensive Chinese type smartwatches. So we're just going to test the Bluetooth out by pairing it up here. Okay, so first thing we need to do is come into, into here and go into Bluetooth. And we'll turn that on. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to, oh, it's already found it there, DZ09. So we'll touch there. Okay. Here. Yes. And you'll see now that it is connected. Now, if we hit the settings up here on the phone, you see that it has both Let's bring this over. It has both phone audio and media audio, so you can play either or both over the phone, okay, or over the watch, because this is a smartwatch, so you can use it as a phone. Okay, so the Bluetooth worked very flawlessly there. Let's um, let's go play some music on it.
Actually, there's, there's no music on this phone, so I guess it's not really going to work. Oh. Okay, I think that was actually playing... Yeah, it's playing off the... Oh no, it is playing Bluetooth music. It says right there. So, I guess I did put some music on this phone because it's playing it. Okay, so that shows us that Bluetooth is working. And you'll see here that the music player, it's playing the music from my phone. So if I, let's go back to the music again. All right, so as you can see, it's playing it off the phone. And the sound is actually coming out of the watch, not out of the phone. Okay, so that was successful. And you see I can control it from either place. All right, so I'm going to switch this off. And it seems to work just fine. And then now what we're going to do is connect a Bluetooth speaker to it. Okay, so we're going to connect this Sony Bluetooth speaker. So we just put this in pairing mode here. All right. Now we'll go to our phone. And we'll go into Bluetooth. Okay, we'll go more settings. Okay, so there's the Bluetooth speaker there. And there we are, connected. And again, if we hit settings here, Oh, that was the wrong button. I don't want to disconnect it. I want to hit on settings. And same thing there. So we can use the Bluetooth for either phone audio or for media or both. Okay, I just forgot it for some reason. All right, so now if we play some music on there. Let's go to the music player. Oh, it's playing it off Google Play Music. So it's Play Music. There it is. Okay, so it's coming out of the speaker now. Okay, so Bluetooth seems to work fine. All right, so that's how easy it is to use Bluetooth. And uh, this wasn't really a lesson on Bluetooth, but more or less just to show you that it actually does work on the blue phone quite well. So the next thing we're going to do is go over the camera app. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over the camera app. Okay, so I just opened the camera. This button at the top here, when you click on that, you get your different shooting modes. Okay, so... Let me zoom in a little bit here. So we have your touch shutter. So when you touch the phone, the shutter will go off. So you don't have to hit the camera button. You got smile shot. So it detects a smiling face. You got shutter sound. And I have that turned off right now. So it doesn't make any sound. Your GPS location. Self timer. So you can take a time shot. 
you've got picture guide so that gives you the lines you got your picture size so you can go in there and you can set the different sizes so let me so you got 8 meg or 6 meg megapixels whether you want wide or 16 by 9 or whether you want 16 by 9 or 4 to 3 okay and then your video quality uh, you got 720p and which is high and then you got medium and fine. Okay, so you can switch those. Zero shutter delay, so that's just what it means. It'll just go take the picture right away. Uh, anti flicker, so you don't get the 60 hertz flicker from devices. And then restoring the default. So those are the different camera settings there for taking pictures. Now up here we have are different modes. Now normal is auto mode. So this just lets the camera do its thing. But this next one's kind of neat. Professional. So you see what's happened now is it's opened the settings for white balance, ISO, and so on down here. And you can actually set the way the you want the camera to act using manual settings, kind of like you would on a real camera. Okay, and then we have our different modes, so we can do a panorama, and we can do face beauty, HDR, night shots, sports, and then you can add other camera modes apparently there. I, I didn't really play with that, but those are your modes that are installed. Here you have your flash, so you can have it auto, on, off or torch which is the flashlight okay and then this just switches the camera to the front facing if I hit it if you're gonna see a picture of a ceiling sort of okay so that's really it now when you take a picture you can let's just set this back to auto you can enhance a picture a little bit. So, for instance, if you're taking a selfie, I'll actually take a selfie of myself. Don't be afraid when you see it. And it has something called Beauty Shot, and we're actually going to need that pretty, pretty much guaranteed with me. All right, so I'm going to snap a, a selfie. Okay. So let's go to the gallery here. Now you see the, if we go down here, you see that we can use face beauty. You can do other editing too. So you can do edit. Let's go into edit. Okay, then you can do effects, border. You can fix the alignment, colors. And then there's some more stuff there. The one I think is cool is face beauty, and if it can detect your face, then you can do certain things here. So, so for instance, blemish, soften the skin tone. Okay, so you see how it adjusts the pictures. Boy, does that need a beauty face, but that's not happening today, because this is just a camera tutorial, not plastic surgery. Okay, so that was a quick tour of how the camera works on this phone. Okay, now I just want to go over uh, some tips on how to get a better picture out of the camera. It can take a decent picture, but there's a trick to it, and the trick is that you need to let it focus and snap it when it has focused ideally. So you see that it has a lot of trouble locking on. You can do something like that. 
Okay, and it beeped a couple times. I think that was to tell us, I think, that it had the optimal focus. Okay, so it isn't the worst, worst picture in the world. Um, let's try something else here. Let's bring this in to the shot. There's the main subject. And you'll see it tries to focus there, and you see the lines come up. And then when you just hit that. Okay, so they're they're decent. They're not they're not really great quality, but they're not the worst either. So let's try and let's let's focus over here. Actually focus there. Okay, so a tiny bit blurry but this may be the what you have to put up with okay and then video camera it's kind of it has it takes a, a lot of time to focus while you're moving so while you're moving around it's constantly trying to focus and the video has no s electronic stabilization or optical image stabilization so it it just uh, isn't gonna get a, a great video if you had it on a tripod or something and you were trying to take a video of some people that were just talking or something <laughs> it'd probably do good but the problem with it is that it just takes too much time to focus Now on this it's not too bad but if you're moving around and and then you come back to where you were it can be quite a, a jittery experience so it isn't the greatest but you, it does take videos and you know they're good enough for for personal videos if you want to show them to friends or something they're not that bad Okay, so it isn't isn't the best, but it isn't terrible. So you can still uh, get some decent stuff out of the camera. I just wanted to give you a little example there of how it works. Now, one other thing I d it doesn't really fit in this section, but I want to tell you anyway, is that this works great with Chromecast. So if you have a Chromecast and you want to cast uh, a video from, say, Netflix. Okay, you see the little square on the top there? Right here. That'll cast to Chromecast. Uh, I'm using it at the moment, so it's not going to do it. But it does work first rate. So if you want to Chromecast a video or something to your Chromecast device on a TV or whatever, that works fine. Okay, so that's it for the camera examples. Okay, now I want to talk about putting in your SIM card and an SD card and maybe a second SIM as well. Okay, so to get the back off, you just peel it up from the bottom, uh, do it on one side and then lift the other side as well and the thing will peel right off. And then you'll see the battery here. So uh, normally you'd, you might have, you probably haven't put your battery in yet before you got your SIMs in there, but you just peel it up from this bottom corner here and then your SIM slot is right here and you see I slid my SIM in there. Uh, I use a nano SIM on my S7 Edge so I put it in a converter to a micro SIM so this takes micro SIM. You also have another micro SIM right here so you slide it up from the bottom here and then your SD card goes in right there. 
Okay, so that's very simple to do. I'll put the battery back in. So top first, and then push it down. And then we'll put the back back on. Just like that. Okay, so we'll just fire it up. Okay, so that's all fired up now. I've uh, tested out the sound quality through calls, and it is very good. It works great for calls, and it works great on the speakerphone as well. Another thing that uh, I like is the sound quality from playing music. It, it has dual speakers. I'm not sure that that means stereo, and I don't think it does, but it has speakers on both the bottom and the top, so when you play music back, it sounds really good. Now, I'm not going to bother playing it to you because you're not going to be able to appreciate it over the over this you know through a video like this so um, but you will see that it gets really nice and loud and the ringtones are nice and loud too so it has a really good sound experience including calls so i just wanted to let you know about that because that's one of the most well it's really not one of the most important things on phones anymore because really people don't talk as much as they used to but when you do need to make a call you're going to get a good experience from the quality of the sound. Now, another thing I want to talk about is storage again. Uh, I went over storage last time a little bit, uh, where we showed you how to set up the storage so that it turns into part of the internal storage. But what I want to show you is the other way you can do it. Okay, so let's go down to storage. Okay, so you see there that I'm using 7.16 gigabytes and it says total 22.57 gigabytes and it's using both. So it's using 6.51 of internal and 669 megabytes of on the SD card. Okay, so that has used, so that has turned the SD card into part of the internal storage. And you see that it automatically writes to SD card. So when I install a new app, let's go into SD card here, and I go into apps, you see I installed ES File Explorer and it automatically put it inside the SD card. So when I run this app now, it's slower than molasses because like I showed you earlier, it was a slow SD card. So it doesn't sound very good or it doesn't, it doesn't uh, go very fast. Now, if we want to reverse this and we want to go back to having the, everything on internal storage and use the SD card as a separate entity, all we have to do is go inside internal storage here and then hit the menu bar up here. And then you want to do migrate data. Okay, so what this will do is pull everything off the SD card and bring it back in to the internal storage. Okay, so it's moving everything now. Okay, so it's moved it all into the internal storage now. So you'll see now that it only says uh, 85 megabytes on here. Okay, and we still have the app in there. So let's move the app out. Otherwise, it'll uninstall it if we reformat the SD card. So let's go to apps. And let's go to ES File Explorer. Uh, 
and then storage. Okay, and then we want to change and move it to internal. There we go. All right, so we've moved everything off the SD card. It's important you do that before you decide to reformat it. So let's go back now again down to storage. Now let's go into SD card and let's reformat it. A little menu thing up there. And then we want to format as portable. Okay, it's giving you a warning here that you need to back anything up. So let's see, format. Once you do that, you can use the SD card on another phone or another device of any kind. Uh, but while it's while it's formatted as internal storage, it encrypts it to the phone. Okay, done. Now, when we get back to this screen now, you'll see that we have default write disk SD card or internal storage. So now, if I was to take a picture now, it's all going to go on internal storage. But what I can do now is hit this. And now when we take pictures, it'll go to the SD card. Okay, so there's two ways of doing that. I showed you the first way before where it extended the internal memory. And you see now that it only says 8 gig available instead of the 24 or whatever it was before. And the external SD card is a separate entity. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that as well. Okay, so at that point, we're done with the quality of the sound, I'm putting in the SD cards and the storage. All right, so uh, to wrap it up, I just want to say that I'm actually quite impressed with this smartphone. For under $100, you're really getting your money's worth. It's fairly quick. The camera works okay. And there really is no problems with it at all. You have good voice quality, good sound quality. Uh, I'm very impressed with it for a phone of its price. Now, I, I use a Galaxy S7 Edge as my daily driver, so that's obviously a far better phone than this. But I don't feel like I'm losing a whole lot when I switch to this one. So to wrap things up, I'm going to take some pictures with both phones and I will post them on my blog so that you can see the difference in the pictures that they take. Now remember, you can get a decent picture as long as you wait for the focusing to take place. Videos, they're not that great, but it's, you know, it'll do in a pinch. Okay, so that is my full in-depth look at the Blue Advanced HD 5.5 budget smartphone. Okay, so this has been Tim Carter at CheapTasticTech.com. Please go to my blog and have a look at some of my other videos. There's some good stuff there. I'll let you know how to do some things with your phone, and I got some other neat things on there.